Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this free game and Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And by golly gosh, I'm back in the United Kingdom after a crazy week and a bit in San Francisco as I was attending GDC 2019. Over the next few days, there will be some videos with my time at GDC 2019, including my thoughts and impressions of the fact that, well, it was my first GDC event ever. So I wanted to tell you exactly what my experience was like, what GDC is like as a whole, and, well, just stuff. Plus, uh, my impressions of the Intel Odyssey event and the Generation 11 graphics. So those will be some videos upcoming. Plus, also, I got the chance to try out Google Stadia. So I do want to give my thoughts and opinions on Stadia based upon what demos I got to try out. Plus, as well, I did attend a couple of Google conferences while I was at GDC, and there'll be some other bits and bobs as well. Also, I want to quickly note that my voice is, as you can probably hear, shot. After over a week of constant talking, plus a head cold, it has done an absolute number on my voice. So if I do sound a little croaky, I can only apologize. I'm trying to rest it as much as possible, but well, I need to shoot a video, so it is what it is, right? But anyway, for today, I have some exclusive Narva information, plus a benchmark, plus other bits and bobs as well, which is rather interesting, at least in my opinion. And we're going to start things out with the exclusive Narva stuff before moving to the benchmark and all of the other topics in this video. So, as many of you are probably aware, Raja Kodori has left AMD and has now been working at Intel for around a year and a half now. And I actually have a video which I've uploaded where Raja was talking at the Odyssey event of exactly why he decided to shift to uh, Intel graphics. You can find that linked in the description or you can simply search for it on the channel. But he did have some goals while he was at AMD. And one of those goals was actually for Narve. Raja Kodori joined and uh, was promoted into the position when Vega was fairly far along in design. In other words, there wasn't that much you could do to influence the actual architecture of Vega, so I was told by a source. Now, this source has proven to be reliable in the past. They have fed me information which has tr uh, proven to be true, but normally this source provides me information firsthand. In other words, it's information that they've directly obtained. This time it's a little different. They've obtained this information through a couple of their own sources. They have assured me that those sources are extremely confident, and in the past they have proven to be very reliable, but I, but I do want to let you guys know that because I have not uh, confirmed those sources and the reliability myself but the source that I am getting this information from has proven to be extremely reliable in the past. Anyway, uh, enough of the preface. So what actually is going on? So Raja Kodori, main goal while he was at AMD in the position he was, was very simple, and that was Narve. Narve appears to be GCN. I'm going to get more into the architecture stuff in just a moment, I promise. So Raja Kodori's goal at AMD was to fix issues with the GCN architecture, for example, improving geometry performance and so much more besides. What about the actual Narve architecture itself? So I was told a number of things. So firstly, there are indeed going to be two generations of Narve, Narve 10 and Narve 20. Now, obviously, each of those generations will have multiple different SKUs, just like we have now with Polaris, and Vega, there is, for example, Vega 64 and Vega 56 and so on. So we'll see very much the same here, but Narve 10 will launch first and will uh, be aiming to fix issues with the GCN architecture. Next year, however, will be Narve 20. So the common consensus is that, and we've heard this from multiple rumors in the past, that Narve 10 will be a lower uh, cost variant of the GPU, right? It will be from the lower, lower echelons of performance all the way up to, let's say, RTX 2070, GTX 1080, that type of thing. Then next year, we've heard this from multiple sources, those GPUs will go up and up and up in performance. For example, RTX 2080 or RTX 2080 Ti levels of performance. Well, I was also told something else, and that is that Narve 20 will have some actual fundamental changes to the architecture. My source was told that he doesn't know all of the information, exactly what AMD are doing here. But one of the changes is that they are working on their own ray tracing technology. Exactly what changes they're making here to implement ray tracing wasn't disclosed to my source, only that the ray tracing performance so far is looking to be extremely impressive. So it's almost certain that 
the next generation of graphics cards from AMD, Narve, will indeed be using a GCM-based architecture, but with improvements to fix the flaws that we've seen from older architectures such as Narve. Indeed, this is something I was discussing with Jim at Adored TV as well, where he was told that almost certainly Narve is indeed going to not be based upon the patents that we've seen in the past. I'll get to the patents more in just a moment. Plus as well, a couple of posts from folks who have worked at AMD, which do seem to hint, it does seem to hint, excuse me, that we will be indeed seeing Narve use a variant of GCN, albeit with an improved design. So what about the, the uh, patents that we're seeing? Well, I don't have much information there, unfortunately. All I was told is that uh, my source believes that they are for a future design, the Arcturus, for lack of a better name for it, or beyond, although it's possible it could be for a custom-based GPU, but no one really knows for certain yet. Also told by my source that GPUs found in the data center would have a larger difference compared to the GPUs that we see within our PCs right now. Basically, there would be a more custom design, but this would not take place until after Narve, possibly the next generation or possibly a generation after that, although the exact details of exactly what AMD would be changing between the two architectures and other data center and uh, customer focused cards was not given. And before wrapping up, I want to go over to some CompuBench results for what is possibly a Navi 10 based GPU. It's also possible it's some variant of Vega, but the naming plus other piece of information that we see on this GPU does more likely push it towards the Nave side of the spectrum. But of course, as always, it's possible that this is a uh, driver's being spoofed or some other uh, fake entry, or it's possible that uh, it's just simply being misread because the uh, software itself doesn't recognize the GPU. So it's some unreleased variant of Vega or something entirely different. But I'm gonna read out the results anyway, because I find them rather interesting. GPU is being detected as a 66AF colon F1, and we have the results versus an RX 580. Face detection is pretty much identical. However, we see that o ocean surface simulation has a drastic performance uplift. And T-Rex, very similar in terms of performance, but video composition is improved greatly as well. Comparing the performance in GFX Bench 4, I've decided to be silly about this for a moment and compare it against an RTX 2080 Ti. And obviously the results speak for themselves with the RTX 2080 Ti being almost twice as fast in Manhattan. However, in T-Rex on off-screen results anyway, it's not that much, uh, it's not quite as far behind. And finally, comparing it against Vega in compute-orientated tasks anyway, Vega, is considerably faster, almost twice the speed in face detection and particle simulation. It's around 50% faster in T-Rex. It's uh, eight, it's four frames a second faster in video composition, though it's a little slower and so on. Going through the benchmark results and it's extremely clear that Narve is definitely faster than the RX 580 in compute based performance, but does lose out by quite the quite the number to Vega. And if we compare uh, traditional uh, game performance with the RTX 2080 Ti, then obviously there's a great deal of difference here. Next up, we're gonna discuss Intel's iGPUs because we have several entries which have popped up thanks to the latest drivers. And we also have a benchmark result as well. 13 total entries, and these include the highest end SKU being listed as the Iris Plus Graphics 950. We also have the 940, 930, and the UHD Graphics 920 and 910, plus various LP entries as well. From what we've ascertained so far, the Plus Graphics 950 is the highest performance SKU and will feature 64 execution units along with higher clock speeds. So this will be over one teraflop in terms of performance. We also have Ashes of the Singularity, a benchmark that's appeared. And the reason this is so interesting is it's because a Generation 11 low power graphics card from Intel, it's an early engineering sample, but critically, it's the LP variant. Even so, it spits out roughly the same level of performance as NVIDIA's MX130 and close to AMD's Vega 8 GPU. 
With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you have, like, share, comment and subscribe. And apologies once again for sounding so croaky. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.